Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again with the uh, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with uh, Mike Lefkow and Joseph Dykus. Uh, guys, we're heading into week seven of the high school football season. It's been uh, it's been really fun so far, a lot of interesting results. Um, but now uh, now we're in onto the onto the back half of the uh, regular season, and uh, a lot of teams are now going into league play. Uh, Mike, you've been around a long time. Um, you know, league play used to be pretty big deal 25, 30, 40 years ago. Now, you know, with teams bouncing around from league to league and, and the power structure and not knowing which teams in which league. And uh, is it that important now? I mean, do you think kids still want to win the league championship or is that just a step in the process of what they hope to be a, a long uh, playoff run? Well, I think it is a step in the process of what they hope is going to be a long playoff run. But, yeah, I think most of these teams still want to win their league. They might not be sure what league they're in or who the other teams are. But, they, yeah, they want to win their league. They want to be able to hang that pennant in the, in the gym, the banner in the gym. Uh, Joseph, what I mean, what do you think? Coming coming out here from Tennessee, was it a big deal in Tennessee? And is what do you think about here? And I'll and I'll give some reasons why it might not be so important once uh, once we get your thoughts. I mean, I think I'm, I agree with Lefty on that one. You know, it's nice to be able to hang that banner. Um, the regular, I still think the regular season does mean something, and being able to say that you won you won your league or you know your you beat the teams in front of you and you won your league. I think that still holds. Uh, that still holds water even today, even like you said, you know, teams move from league to league to league to league. I think it still means something. But you've got cases like in the CCS where you've got, uh, you know, their, their, their leagues are all divided into power structures, A leagues, B leagues, C leagues, and, mm -hmm. and the A league champions in a lot of cases now end up in the, in the top division in this co competitive equity model in which, uh, the top eight teams that qualify for the CCS playoffs uh, using their formula, which also includes the Cal Preps rankings and their own point system that they've got set up in the CCS. The top eight teams in the CCS will end up in Division One. the next eight in Division Two, and on down the line through Division Five. So, And only section champions can go to a regional. So Wilcox, and we pointed this out, uh, a number of times. Uh, Wilcox finished second to Los Gatos last year and ended up in Division Two. And Los Gatos went undefeated last year in the regular season and ended up ended up in Division One. Uh, Los Gatos was out of the playoffs after one week. Wilcox goes on a five or six week run all the way to a state championship game down in Southern California. Uh, it might be the exact opposite this year. We could we could see Wilcox win the league. A yeah. lot will depend on their game against, I mean, obviously it's going to come down to their game against Los Gatos. I believe that's on October 21st. Um, so the the winner of that game could end up in Division One, and the loser ends up in Division Two. So you have an easier path to, to a state game. Menlo Atherton, we're all worried about Menlo Atherton having lost three in a row. They lost to Half Moon Bay last week, which means they're probably not going to win the Bay Division, but they're going to qualify for the playoffs. And right now, I, I just for fun, I went through Cal Preps' rankings with the uh, top eight teams in CCS right now. And looking at it, uh, Sarah, obviously the one seed. Um, and this is just off the Cal Preps rankings. Uh, I want to remind readers that that or viewers that CCS uses Cal Preps rankings and their own formula all mixed together. But just for fun, let's just look at what Cal Preps rankings would look like for the playoffs if they were to start this weekend. Uh, Sacred Heart Cathedral would be the eighth seed going to Sarah. Um, Sacred Heart Prep would be the five seed going to number four, Wilcox. Number six would be St. Francis going to number three, Salinas. And the seventh seed would be Los Gatos going to the two seed, Mitty. Hmm. The, the top seed in Division Two would be Half Moon Bay. So they're right on that bubble. Do they want to be the top seed in Division Two, or do they want to be the eighth seed in Division One? And you, we all know where the, the where the eighth seed in Division One is going. Yeah. So Half Moon Bay, according to Cal Preps, they'd play Saint Ignatius. They would play Sarah. Sarah, as the one seed. 
Lefty, what do you think? You like this system? No, I don't like the system. I mean, I've been a big proponent. I'm going to say it again. It's time to separate the publics and the privates. I mean, if you looked at that Division One in Central Coast section, what is it? It's five private schools and then what? Wilcox, Los Gatos. Well, at least they both make it this year. And then uh, oh, who Salinas. 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 Okay. So you have five private schools all from the West Cal. And then you have three public schools. I mean, I think it's time to just separate them. I, okay, so a Half Moon Bay would have to play either Los Gatos or Wilcox. Would not, it would not be an easy assignment. But, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just fair. I mean, in, you know, the private schools then would have to determine what kind of football program they want to have or what they want to do. I mean, you look at the Sacred Heart Prep, they're having a much better season this year than they had last year. Right. And then last year at what did they finish in the regular season? Three and seven, I believe, or something, something in that neighborhood qualified for the playoffs and went on a deep run because they were down in division three or four. I can't I can't recall which division they were in in CCS, but they go on a deep run this year because they're having a great season uh, at regular season. They're going to they could end up in division one and they would have to beat Sarah to get to a regional. So yeah, it's yeah. just it's just the way it works out. Um, so that's to keep in mind as we go down the you know go down the stretch run. That's why I asked: is is the regular season that important anymore? Do you, no, want, I, do, I mean, do you want to win these games if you're Wilcox, Los Gatos, Half Moon Bay? Well, Sacred I think there's Prep. something yeah. to going ten and zero or nine and one and winning your league. I mean, and again, you get the banner in the gym, but. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just time to separate the private. Well, let me ask you. Let me put it this way: Would you have rather been Los Gatos last year, going ten and zero, and losing in the first round of the playoffs of Division One, or Wilcox finishing second and being a, a very solid football team last year, and winning Division Two in CCS, winning a regional championship, and getting to go down to Mission Viejo in one of the top divisions for the state championships? Well, that's oh, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Wilcox. But then again, if I'm playing for Los Gatos, there's still a certain amount of pride in having gone 10 and 0, having beaten Wilcox. And um, yeah, I'm and then you know you can lead the campaign to separate the publics and the private. Well, that I don't, you know, we've been pounding that drum for 30 years, 40 years. So they, it's not going to happen. So it's yeah, we've been pounding that drum for what's that? Opinion. It's not even worth discussing, in my opinion, because it's well, never going to happen. To me, that's a real. I mean, that's a real shame of the whole thing. We've been pounding that drum for thirty or forty years. It's not worth discussing. Yes, it is. It's time for the CIF to do what's right. I mean, separate. 30, forty years ago, you didn't have the situation. Now you do, and it's time to finally separate them. So Los Gatos is not put in the position of being 10 and 0 last year and then having to go up against a Sarah or St. Francis or something like that and getting beaten the first round of the playoffs because Los Gatos at 10 and 0 is not as good as the top West Cal team. So let me ask you this. Do yes. you like uh do you like the CCS setup where it's uh it's all competitive equity, top eight, division one, next eight, division two, or do you like the NCSs where uh, were a team like um, a Marin Catholic, which is clearly one of the top three or four teams in the North Coast section, seemingly year in and year out. Where are they going to be, like down in Division Four? Well, the last I looked, that's where they were, unless they change it before the playoffs. Uh, does Marin Catholic belong in Division Three or Four or wherever they're going to end up? No, oh, Marin Catholic should be a Division One school. I mean, there's no excuse for them being Division Four. That's just a travesty. I like the CCS situation better because at least it's a little bit more honest. I mean, the NCS, that's a joke that Marine Catholic is Division Four. Marine Catholic beat James Logan, which is Division One, 42 to 12. I mean, Marine, I mean, James Logan is not a bad team. James Logan and, here it is very next week. Right. And and that's unfair to James Logan. So James Logan is going to be in Division One. They'll end up being seated sixth or seventh. Though they'll come up against 
a powerhouse team, a De La Salle or a Pittsburgh or something like that. Is that fair? Why not put your Logan in Division Four and move Marin Catholic? I mean, Marin Catholic won that game by 30 points. Hey, congratulations, guys. Now you're in Division One. There's no perfect setup, is there? Well, there's no oh. perfect setup. But, again, and, and this is something I've harped on for years, it's time to, to – you'll come a little bit closer by having the private schools together and the public schools together. Yeah, I was going to say – And you think that will make all the difference in the world? It won't make all the difference in the world, but it will help it a little bit. I mean, the – the competitive equity thing that Darren talked about that that helps but yeah moving out here from Tennessee it was I was shocked when I found out that public and private schools play in the same uh in the same playoffs because you know in Tennessee they split was it 25 years ago I think because the private schools were just winning they were winning all of the state championships so that all right, we're going to split it and yeah they might play each other during the regular season early on but after week four or five, you know, you're in league play and the public schools play each other and then the private schools play their own playoffs and everyone's happy. Well, you know what they can do too. I mean, you can schedule as many non-league games as you want with publics versus privates. Why don't you do this? You know how you have the NorCal and SoCal the week before the uh, state championships? All right. You could do the, the top, you can go division by division. The private school winner plays the public school winner in division one for the championship. And that's when you have your one private versus public game. But up until that point, they're separated. And there's a lot of states that separate them. And I'm sure they do just fine. Well, we'll keep beating that drum. And uh, maybe at some point it will it will happen, Lefty. No, it's, it's, you're right. I, I agree with you. It's not going to change, probably not in our lifetimes. But, I mean, no. I'll tell you what. If if some of the section officials and state CIF officials wanted to do it right, they would sit down and figure out a formula to do this. And I, I don't know why they can't. I mean, has it ever been explained why they can't do this? No. No, I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. it has, but not not any I, not anytime soon. And I don't feel uh, comfortable throwing something out there that uh, that I haven't researched uh, uh, more closely. So uh, I mean, I'm even, sure it's been I'm sure it's been out there. It's just um, um, and, and there's inequities when it's privates versus privates and publics versus publics. I mean, playing modern day or St. John Bosco is that fair for a Northern California school? For a Northern California private school. Yeah, for any, yeah. For, I mean, do Mitty or De La Salle or. or, or you mean Sarah? Or, Sarah or De La Salle? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Sarah or De La Salle. Do they have a chance to go beat Modern Day or St. John Bosco in a championship game? I mean, the only thing you're trying to wonder is if they can avoid a running clock. Right. But they're both privates. So, yeah, they're both playing by the same rules. Not, if you're, yeah, if you're not. Uh, separating them uh well, well we've yeah, no, this, and i don't i don't i don't want to go down that rabbit hole but we'll just end it with this i mean you've discussed it a number of times i think you've even written it lefty is that i mean the entire state needs to be playing under the same umbrella it's kind of ridiculous that ever that there are 10 sections and they all they all have their Different own rules, rules. and it's, oakland and san francisco are separate sections. it's, ab it's absolutely silly if you oakland think needs it. to go to north coast and san francisco needs to go to central coast um Meantime, you know, we're going to have some team that we don't even know about at this point that's going to that will finish the regular season three and seven or two and eight or four and six. And they're going to go on a big state run and 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 win a state championship. And they're going to get honored. You know, somebody's going to invite them to City Hall, some politician that doesn't know the system. And they're going to be uh, looked at as, uh, you know, like, um, you know, they just they just won it all. Um when really they were, you know, middle of the pack in their league and <laughs> and they end up in the right division. Well, wasn't there a one and eight team that played for a state championship last Down year? Down in Southern California, yeah. I think that team lost one and eight or one and nine in the regular season, then they go on a run. 
Yeah, then they went on a run. I think there were two of them. There was another yeah. one that was well. I think that's. I think that's the question, Lefty. Is would you rather be the team that went one and eight or one and nine in the regular season and made it to a championship, or the team that went ten and zero or nine and one and lost in the playoffs? Well, the way it's set up, I mean, once you win the state championship, you're you're a state champion. You can hang the banner. And you can hang the, the banner, and nobody's ever going to ask look. questions when they see it. I don't think they're putting. I don't even. I'm not even sure some of these schools are even putting those division numbers on there. It's just uh, state champions. Yeah. And you know they didn't put on there. They were one and eight and got in the championship. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think they put that. Hey guys, uh, unless you have anything else to add, let's get to the picks. We got 15 of them to go. Um, anything else? No, nope. nah, let, let's uh, let's uh, make up this five game deficit I have in the standings. That's true. Uh, rough week for young Joseph Dykus. The kid went nine and six in week six. Uh, left Lefty and I both went eleven and four. So we are we remain in a dead heat. Lefty atop the standings at sixty two and twenty eight through six weeks. Well, the kid is fifty seven and thirty three. Like Dodgers uh, and Giants battling. Let's get, let's get this thing rolling. Uh, week seven, we're going to start off with a Thursday game in Gilroy where uh, Christopher, which has moved into the Blossom Valley Athletic League Mount Hamilton division this year. They're going to be playing their first BVAL game at home against Lincoln. It's quite a matchup. Both teams coming in five and oh, Lincoln played another undefeated team last week, Branham, and rolled. Like I want to say that was about 42 to 12. The Phillips brothers, Tayden and uh, Kyan. Kyan, the freshman, Tayden, the senior quarterback, are, are doing big things there at Lincoln. Lefty, you're going to be first up. Who you got? Oh, I'm going to go with the home team, Christopher. Lefty's going Christopher. Joseph. I'm going, I'm going uh, Lincoln San Jose. Joseph with Lincoln San Jose, and I am going Lincoln San Jose. Cal Preps is going Christopher, so it's a 2-2 split. Cal Preps' computer says Christopher 27. Lincoln, 21. Uh, game two on our list. It's a Friday night game. Tack Vedena Stadium in Fremont. Or Washington or Fremont at 4-1. and one. We'll be playing Irvington 4-1. and one. This is an MVAL WACC Mission Division game. Um, let's see here. They did not play in 2021 in the spring or in the fall. Last meeting was 2019, which Washington won 54 to nothing. In 2018, Irvington won 13 to seven. Both teams are four and one. Joseph, you're first up. I'll go with uh, Irvington. Joseph's going Irvington. Lefty. I'm going to go with Dennis Eckersley's alma mater, Washington. You're going to go with Washington. And I'm going to go with my daughter's alma mater, Washington. So. Uh, two to one, Washington, uh, three to one, Washington. Cal Prep says Washington 34 and, uh, Irvington 27. Bill Walsh coached at Washington. Right. He also coached at Washington. Yes. yes. Um, Bill Walsh picking against us, picking against me too. Okay. Yeah. Look at you, Joseph. You're going with Irvington. Maybe you know something we don't. We got, we got I got to make up these games. In the you got to make up these, you got to make up these games. Game three on the list. Uh, it's a WCAL game. Um, Friday night in Mountain View, where St. Francis two and three maybe turned around a season last week with a big win over St. Ignatius on the road. They'll be at home to play Sacred Heart Cathedral, which uh beat Valley Christian last uh last week to go to three and two. I believe that was Sacred Heart's first win over Valley 14 years. I think a lot of teams are going to be having those kind of kind of uh. Uh, facts about their wins over Valley. First time since, first time since, because this is a, a down year for Mike Machado's program. But uh, I've been looking at some of those lower level scores at, at Valley, and I, I think this might be a one or two year hiccup because I think uh, I think Valley will be back. But if you're going to get them, you better get them this season. Um, St. Francis, Sacred Heart. I'll go first. I'm taking St. Francis to, uh, to even his record at three and three. Joseph, who you got? Uh, I'm going with St. Francis, even though I have a feeling Sacred Heart Cathedral is going to – I think they're going to make it a close game. But, oh, I think yeah. it's going to be a very close game, but yeah. Jo uh, yeah. Ran for what, 200 – I had a running back that ran for what, 250 yards last week? How do you pronounce his name? It's K-E-L-A. K-E-L-A? K-E-L-A, yeah. Well, anyhow, 
the young man rushed for 232 yards and 29 carries and scored two touchdowns. And he's a, a candidate for athlete of the week. Uh, Lefty, who you got? I'm going to go with St. Francis. And the computer says St. Francis 21-20. So uh, 4-0 for St. Francis. Game four on the list, um, one and four Mountain View. You talked to Tim Logo last week, right? And he says that it's, um, after their brutal schedule, he feels like this is more of a comparable opponent. Yeah, right? it's be, yeah. look across the field and see someone their own size now. <laughs> so they're going to be going up against Homestead. Homestead's a two and three. Um, one and four Mountain View. I, I'm i taking Mountain View. Uh, who you got, Joseph? I mean, Cal Preps is picking Mountain View, too, and I, I'll go with the computer. Lefty. Yeah, I'm going with Mountain View. I, their schedule has been brutal. And I I think this week they're gonna they're gonna win. Yeah, their losses are to Midi, Sacred Heart Prep, Half Moon Bay, and Wilcox. <laughs> that's that's not bad. And um uh three of those teams are are among the top eight in Cal Preps' rankings in CCS and Half Moon Bay is nine. So <laughs> pretty yeah, tough schedule. So yeah. I'm on Mountain View. Uh, game five on the list, uh, Doug Longero's uh, Los Lomas Knights at two and three traveling to play uh, Floyd Burnside's uh, Akalani Stons, five and oh. Um, wins for Los Lomas uh, are over Lee and last week over De Anza. I'm going to go with uh, Trevor Rogers' team. Trevor Rogers putting up huge numbers for uh, – for Akalani's 20, 26 receptions, 505 yards, eight touchdowns. I'm going to go with Akalani's to win at home in their Diablo Athletic League Foothill Division opener. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Akalani's as well. Um, yeah, when I was doing the research for the for the undefeated teams on Monday Morning Lights, which you can read on uh, mercurynews.com, bspaytimes.com, uh, yeah, Trevor Rogers' stats just jumped off the page. Lefty. Yeah, I'm going to go with Akalani's, but I think it's going to be close. Akalani's predicted to win by the computer. Cal Prep says 34-21. Game six on the list. Terra Nova, 4-1 at Carlmont, 3-2. Carlmont's losses were to Half Moon Bay by 14 and Cappuccino last week, I believe it was, by 2. Terra Nova has wins over... Santa Clara, Lincoln, San Francisco, Cupertino, and Hillsdale, and a loss to Seaside. Um, I'm going with Carlmont to win on his home field. Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I'm picking Carlmont. Joseph? Gonna, I'll go with Carlmont, even if it's not going to help me make up any uh, games. And the computer's taking Terra Nova, 28-27. Mm. biter. Um, game seven on the list, Menlo Atherton, two and three at Berlin, game three and two. The um, much-hyped Menlo Atherton Bears have lost three in a row. We don't know the status of Jurion Dickey. Reported last week by uh, by our correspondent, David Kiefer, that he was uh, out with an undisclosed injury last week. Um, and that is out indefinitely. So we do not know if uh, Jurion will be in uniform for the Bears on uh, Friday night. Uh, even if he is not. I'm taking MA to get back on track. They've won five in a row over Berlin game, including one last year. So I'm going to take the Bears to go to three and three. Joseph, who you got? I've got MA too. Lefty? I'm going to go with Menlo Atherton. And the computer says Menlo Atherton 31 and Berlin game 12. Um, interesting matchup here in our eighth game of the 15 we're picking. Foothill at two and four. Traveling to Doherty Valley 6-0. Doherty Valley 6-0 for the first time in program history. Um, Foothill is 5-1 against Doherty. Uh, they did lose an overtime game to the Wildcats in 2018. That score was 35-28. to um, I'm taking Foothill, but I think Doherty's going to be – I think Doherty's going to make this one really interesting. Joseph, who you got? Give me Doherty Valley. They're going to defend their uh, home field. Wow. Lefty. Oh, I'm going to go with Foothill. I think Foothill is just a little bit better. And the computer says Foothill by 17, 31-14.
So I don't think it's going to be 17, but we'll see. Uh, game nine, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Clayton Valley, which uh, looks like it turned its season around last week with a big win over Jesuit of Carmichael. Uh, Christian Aguilar, the quarterback for, uh, for Clayton, had a huge game. Uh, they're going to be traveling to Amador Valley for their East Bay Athletic League Mountain Division opener. Amador is four and one. They beat Menlo School from the CCS last week, 14 to six. They've got a really great defense there at Amador. Their only loss was a seven to three score to El Cerrito in the season opener. Lefty, I'll let you go first. Oh, I'm going to go with the uh, Ugly Eagles. I think it'll be a low scoring game, but I think Clayton gets this one. Joseph, I'm going. I'm going the opposite. I think Amador Valley. I mean, their defense is is so good, and they're playing at home. I think it's going to be ten to three, Amador Valley. Three. Wow. I'm yeah. going. Clayton, I'm going Clayton Valley to win. I think. I think uh, they've got it turned around now after that week. I, I think. I think Murph took off the kid gloves. He's back to old Murph on the on the sideline. The head coach at Clayton Valley, Tim Murphy. Um, the computer also says Clayton Valley, but it says very close, 21-17. So we'll see how that goes out, how that uh, unfolds. Game 10, Miramane, 4-1 and one with Luke Duncan, the UCLA commit at quarterback. They're going to be going up against Northgate. Uh, Miramane averaging 37.4 points per game. Northgate's giving up 5.6. Uh, what's that old saying? Uh, defense wins championships yes uh, is that what they say i haven't yes. heard that before yeah um uh i'm taking northgate to win at home lefty who you got i'm gonna take miramani to win this one i think miramani might be a little bit stronger joseph yeah, i'm agreeing with lefty i think miramani their offense is their Might offense is something else and uh Looking at Northgate, they have a great defense, but who they haven't played maybe the strongest competition. So Miramani yeah. definitely, definitely the Miramani's offense is definitely going to be the strongest that they're going to face at least so far. We'll see how that one unfolds. Uh, game eleven on the list of San Jose City College, where Bellarmine at uh, three and two will be at home to face the number one team in the Bay Area News Group rankings, the Sarah Padres five and zero. Oh, Sarah routed um, Midi last week, thirty five to seven. Bellerman edged Reardon three to nothing. Um, in the last five meetings between these teams, the score, Sarah, 210. Bellerman, seven. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking Sarah to win this game. Don't think it's going to be as bad as the computer says, but I'm going to go Sarah. Lefty. Who you got? Yeah, oh, 210 to 7. What's that? An average score of 42 to 1? <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I think it'll be a little closer than that. Actually, I'm going to go with Sarah, but I think this game might be surprisingly close. Okay. Yeah. Just I'm, gonna go with, I'm going with Sarah, and, I mean, hasn't it been the last couple of weeks Sarah has gone off to kind of a slow start um, first half? Yeah. So, it, I mean, just the way they're playing, they might be close for a half or – a little bit over half, and then Sarah takes over. The Cal Preps computer says Sarah 46, Bellerman 0. Uh, that's not, no, not going to be that bad. No. That computer. no. Somebody fed it the wrong information, I think. Somebody fed it the wrong information. All right. Um, game 12 on the list. Uh, San Ramon Valley 5-0. and Climbing's 3-1. and Joseph, yep. you're going to be there. You're going to see be Mac there. What, the 100th time this year? Um, yeah, I feel like I'm the Mac beat reporter at this point. Uh, just want to say, first off, I'm going to I'm gonna take McClyman's. Um I was feeling good about that Pittsburgh, feeling good about that Pittsburgh pick or that McClyman's over Pittsburgh pick last week for about three quarters and then saw it slip away. But McClyman's defense is – their defensive lines, like they take one guy out and they bring in another and they bring in another and then bring in another. Luke Baker's uh, averaging 73% completion percentage on the year. Correct. Correct. And, uh, he's, he's thrown 134 passes. And uh, let me do my math real quick. Only 31 of them have hit the ground. He's completed uh, 
98 to his team and five to the other team. So, uh, but he's got 16 touchdown passes, 1,497 yards. Uh, you're telling me that McClyman's going to put some pressure on him. Is that what you're he, saying? Yes, they're going to they're put some pressure on him. Um, and you've already given your pick. You're taking McClyman's. Taking McClyman's. They're playing at the Mac House. It's going to be it's going to be loud rocking. there. It's going to be Rowdy. rocking. Yeah. Uh, lefty, who you got? Yeah, I'm. I agree. I think it'll be McClyman's. I mean, if if I'm Coach Peters. I'm blitzing. I'm I'm bringing everybody. Let's see how you're in the house. You're bringing oh, you the house. And not, and not just the guys on the line. I mean, I'm going to have some safety blitzes, and I mean, I'm going to have them coming from all directions. The thing is, I don't even know if they need to bring everybody. I mean, they they bring their front four, and they they get a ton of pressure just with their front four. It's crazy. Yeah, but you know, San Ramon's a well coached team, and and they all figure something out. So if I'm Coach Peters, I you got to change things up a little bit. It's going to be a really good game. I'm taking Mac too. Uh, so it's three for Mac, and the computer says San Ramon Valley, 31-27. What's the computer now, right? Cal, Cal Preps' computer says 31-27. Okay, we got four, uh, three more games on the list. Uh, let's do the Saturday games first, and then we'll do the last one will be the De La Salle game. So uh, game four, no, the sat, first Saturday game on the list, Kennedy-Richmond, 5-0. St. Mary's of Berkeley, five and zero. Um, St. Mary's is eight and three uh, against Kennedy in the Max Preps era, but has lost three in a row. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Lefty, I'll let you go first. I'm gonna go with Kennedy, but this is a different St. Mary's team. Uh, they are they've got better coaching now. They're getting that program together, but I I think Kennedy gets the best of them. Joseph, I'll go with uh, St. Mary's Berkeley. Um, I mean, these are two uh, two of the undefeated teams, right? And the, so you can't really go wrong with either one. But I'll go with I'll go with the home team. I'm going with Kennedy as well, but I was very surprised by the prediction of the Cal Preps computer. The the computer's been surprising a number of times today. So I, I'm not sure what the computer was doing last night. Maybe it was celebrating the 49ers win. I have no idea, but the computer says St. Mary's will win this game 31 to 7. Yeah, I, I Ooh, saw wow, that. that I, was, I said, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> uh Okay, for, game 14 of the 15 we're picking. This is also a Saturday game. Half Moon Bay, the team we talked about, which is you know, at this point, they, they've got a path to Division One for CCS, which is maybe not where they want to be. I don't know. They're 5-0, and oh, traveling to Sacred Heart Prep, 4-1. and one. Sacred Heart Prep's only loss was the 13-12 to 12 game against Sacred Heart Cathedral at Keysar Stadium to open the season. Um, Sacred Heart Prep has given up no more than 13 points in any game this year. They're playing at home. Um, I've been uh, I've been wrong about Sacred Heart Prep a couple of times. Um, they're not going to get bulletin board material from me because I'm taking Sacred Heart Prep to win this game. I think it's going to be close, but I'm taking the Gators uh, largely because of their defense. That uh, that defense is something else. Uh, Joseph, who you got? Sacred Heart Prep. Lefty. Yeah, I think Sacred Heart Prep, uh, they played a little tougher schedule, too. So I'm, I'm going yeah. with them. Uh, and the computer says Sacred Heart Prep 31-17. Well, you know, that, that computer, right? Maybe Cal Preps needs to buy a new computer. They need to <laughs> update their software. <laughs> Are they still running Windows 7? I, I'm not sure what they're doing, but that's what they say, 31-17. they did that computer a bottle of vodka before they had to make the picks. Yeah, it was doing something, celebrating. I'm not sure what it was celebrating, but it was doing something. Uh, last game, De La Salle, three and two, had last week off after their tough loss to Folsom. Um, they will be on the road playing St. Mary's of Stockton at six and O. Oh. St. Mary's of Stockton uh, has has the their most impressive wins were Central Catholic Modesto, forty seven to seven. They beat St. Ignatius 49 to 20. They beat Cardinal Newman 32-18. And then they got wins over Lodi 
and O'Dowd, and they have one other win that I did not mark down. Um, they are 0 and 7 against De La Salle in the Max Preps era. And as we discussed quite a bit, De La Salle has already lost two games to NorCal teams. Uh, Sarah will be keeping an eye on this game because if St. Mary's of Stockton somehow wins, um, they're going to be probably in the division that will be, uh, that will include Folsom in their playoffs. So they're really the only team that, you know, if Sarah goes and runs the table and wins CCS, the only team that could probably uh, knock Sarah out of that open division game. Uh, that being said, I'm taking De La Salle to win this game. I think like Clayton Valley last week, I think this is the game that's going to turn around De La Salle season. I think they're going to have their most impressive game of the year. And I think they're going to win. Um, Joseph, who you got? I'm going to go with the home team. I think they're going to be now one and seven against uh, De La Salle. I'm going with St. Mary's of Stockton. There you go. Lefty. You're going to be there, right, Lefty? I'm going to be there. I'm going to go with De La Salle. I think this is a game in which both teams want to prove something. You know, like what you talked about, Darren, with De La Salle. But I think St. Mary's is, like you said, they're 0-7 against De La Salle, and they're 6-0 and right now. This legitimizes them if they beat De La Salle. But if they don't, they're still a tier below the, the really elite teams in Northern California. So I think both teams are going to be coming out fired up. Close? So you, you think it's going to be close? I think, well, what I think, it'll either be a close game or De La Salle just turn on the Jets and, and run away. But um, I think that De La, I think for St. Mary's, this is a huge game. And I think for De La Salle, it's a chance to reestablish their reputation. Bigger game for St. Mary's than it is for De La Salle. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm, I think it is. I think it's yeah. a huge game for De La Salle. Well, I think it's a huge I mean, game. They're for not going to get that. They're they're not going to be able to erase Sarah and Folsom this season. But this is something that they win this game. That there'd be something to feel good about going into you know their the the four e ball games that they're going to play and then into the playoffs. But you know, I mean, to me, De La Salle, you know, they're like if you want to compare them to the college game, they're like the Alabama or the. Ohio State. I mean, they're a great program. They've been a great program for a long time. They're very legit. St. Mary's has not climbed that pedestal yet. And this would be a chance for St. Mary's to get up on that pedestal and say, hey, look at us. Right. We're now there with the Folsoms and and maybe the other great SAC Joaquin section schools, at least, and maybe throughout Northern California. The computer uh, says De La Salle will win this game 31-21. So, not a bad prediction. Yeah, hey, it's not bad. The computer sobered up between the last couple picks yeah. and this one. Yeah. So we're – we're okay. So um, I have nothing else to add. We've, we've, we've covered a lot today. Uh, Left, do you have any parting shots? No, I think I took all my parting shots early. <laughs> I, took, I, I took them as opening Nothing. shots instead of parting shots. Yeah. Uh, no, other than athletic directors and uh, and coaches, please send your uh, boys and girls athlete of the week nominations um, to throughout high the schools, week. High schools high school. at bayarianewsgroup.com. That's high schools, all one word, at the at sign, bayarianewsgroup.com. We take nominations till 11 a.m. each Monday. Uh, the polls come out middle of the day Monday. Voting goes on for roughly 50 to 52 hours. It ends at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. Winners are announced every Friday on the Mercury News and East Bay Times websites. And now in the print edition of the Mercury News and East Bay Times sports sections. Yep. So that's pretty, pretty cool that you get your 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 name in the paper you get your photo in the paper uh look at last friday's uh our winners last week yep. got in the paper so moving forward winners in the paper so 
Uh, that's it uh, from this end. Get a digital subscription if you get a chance. Uh, that helps us out to keep going. Uh, MercuryNews.com, EastBayTimes.com. Uh, have a great rest of your guys' week. Uh, can't wait for the games week seven, uh, week seven games this weekend. And we'll be back with another show next week.